Warrior Nun returns for Season 2 as Ava and the Order of the Cruciform Sword must find a way to defeat Adriel as he works to build his following into the most dominant religion in the world. That's right, this man is forming a cult. Can we stop him? Of course we can. Of course we can. Kristen here, and based off the manga-style comic series Warrior Nun Ariella, the first season of Warrior Nun introduced us to a paraplegic teenage orphan who wakes up from the dead possessing supernatural powers as the chosen halo bearer for a secret sect of demon-fighting nuns. While the first season showed a lot of potential, I'll be honest, it felt a little bit more like a prequel to what we'd want to see in a season two, which is a stronger sisterhood, a bigger threat, and the truth about where this Davidian portal really leads to. And we got all that and more in this action-packed second season. Alba Batista remains a compelling and affecting actress who delivers a dynamic performance as Ava, who has really grown significantly since the first season in both her powers and emotional depth. Instead of running away, which she often did in the first season, we see her embrace her new position and kick some major butt in some really epic fight sequences. A huge highlight is the development of the relationship between Ava and Beatrice. The two start out as close friends and confidants, but their longing looks and magnetic chemistry have been evident from the very beginning. You see some truly beautiful moments between them that ultimately end in a passionate kiss as they reveal their true love for each other. The acceptance of their love is particularly exciting, especially when this is a show focused on religion, which has notoriously not been very accepting of LGBTQ plus groups. But Warrior Nun does not shy away from the relationship, and they give us the genuine and well-developed love story between two women that we deserve. The show also continues its exploration of, you know, what it means to be a person of faith, science versus religion, sacrifice, false messiahs, and the power of sisterhood and found family. There are also really intriguing parallels between Ava and Jesus himself, as of course we saw her be resurrected in the first season, and then in season two we see her walk on water, we see her have the ability to both put on and take off this crown of thorns, which was actually something that Jesus was forced to wear during his crucifixion, and she even is able to bring people back from the dead. As much as, you know, we're focused on the story of religion and also the skepticism of it, they are having this young woman kind of follow in these parallels and beats of the most known religious figure there is. There were also some really interesting parallels between Ava and Mother Superion, who was a former warrior nun that the Halo rejected. And while they both kind of want to work alone in the situation that they're in, their ultimate reasons why might be why Superion was booted from the Halo. Ava has found a true love for her fellow sister warriors, and she wants to protect them all, whereas Superion was really arrogant in her usage of the Halo. Meanwhile, Adriel manipulates people with fake miracles, with plagues, with fear and horror to build his own religious following on Earth. He even has his followers possessed by demons. We learn more about him. He's definitely no angel. He's actually a fugitive from this other world. He escaped with the halo because Rhea, who seemed to be the equivalent of God in this universe, Q, Ariana Grande's God as a woman, didn't want to follow in his vision of leadership. Basically, he was just a man who didn't like being led by a woman and wanted to be in charge. And in a black blasphemous look at religion, he's using the divine power of prayer to power the portal and make people believe he is God. His plan is to bring in wraith demons from the Ark to enslave planet Earth and become God by imprisoning God, aka Rhea. While Adriel did seem to be one step ahead of everyone at first, I think he got a little too cocky, he got a little too ahead of himself, and it didn't work out in his favor. I do wish though that they'd shown a little bit more of what he was doing, a little bit more of his plagues and how that was affecting the community and the world overall. It felt a little limiting in the scope of what we actually got to see. Diving deeper into what Adriel was trying to do though, I think can really make your head spin when it comes to the religious foundations of this show. Much of what we know about the Catholic Church in this series has actually been built upon by Adriel and the Halo. Back in the first season, it was thought that the Pope and other high ups were the real villains, keeping Adriel's bones around so that demons will show up on Earth for their own selfish reasons of keeping faith and power to themselves. While that ended up not being the whole truth, it does make you question what the nuns are fighting for when everything they know and believe in was ultimately inspired by Adriel, and even just something as simple as prayers can be used to fuel his evil plan. I would love to see them explore that more and just the history of like religion and the church and what it means in this world in a third season. This season dives deeper into the characters that we know, like Mother Superion and her brief history as the warrior nun, Lilith, who turns to Adriel as she struggles with 
this otherworldly transformation she's going through and this immense jealousy that she has for Ava and Camilla who forms an almost Harry Potter like divinium mind connection with Adriel that ends up working out in her own favor. We're also introduced to new characters like Miguel aka season one's Michael who has returned from this other world to stop Adriel based on the instruction of Rhea and Yasmin who's a refreshing new addition as his over eager ally who leads the sisters to the crown to stop Adriel once and for all. I love that the characters we follow aren't just black and white they have a lot of layers to them. You did however feel the whole left from missing Shotgun Mary. According to the creators the actress who played Shotgun Mary had some personal things going on in her life and that's why she wasn't able to return for this season but I thought they were very good about the way that they kind of kept it open-ended. They said that they lost Mary so I feel like if she did decide she wanted to come back if they got a third season the door is kind of open there. The series ends with Adriel finally being defeated, Ava getting sent through the portal to try to heal a fatal wound, and Lilith telling Beatrice that a holy war is coming. There's a holy war coming. I really hope we end up on the same side. This for me is where things got a little bit muddled. Now that Adriel is gone, what is this holy war that they're talking about? I feel like they didn't necessarily set that up. Yes, we've been introduced to this godlike being in Rhea, but it seemed like she was on Ava's side. She even helped Ava and Beatrice. So I think it might have been helpful for the writers to introduce something a little bit more substantial there. It just felt very vague to be like, oh yeah, now this holy war, especially when Adriel has just been defeated. Who is this new person coming in? Unless all of a sudden Rhea is just like, okay, well now that this portal's open, I'm gonna take over Earth myself. What's the motivation? You know, I, I'm curious to see where they go if they get a third season. All in all, Warrior Nun takes season two to the next level. I really love watching Alba Baptista's performances and everything from Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris to Warrior Nun. Like, the roles are so dynamic. Like, she has such a range, and I think she really transforms on screen. And this second season expertly balances action, romance, sacrifice, and puts the faith back in humanity. I'd love to hear what you thought about Warrior Nun season two, so make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and if you want to talk more TV and movies with me outside of the comments section, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash If you like this one, you can check out more of my videos right over here. See ya!